Hi, this is Kim Watson. Welcome to Weekly Outlook on the major currencies. Now, before I look at the uh, technicals, let's have a, just a quick run through and look at the main uh, data being released this week. So, we've already had this morning's uh, figures out there. Manufacturing PMI came out above expectation at 53.8. Ah, there's doomsayers. Um, they won't be happy with that, will they? Um, but it's still growing. Um, Net lending to individuals dropped somewhat, with no surprise there really. I don't think. I think things are tightening up. Um, manufacturing's uh, data due out in 15 minutes, so I don't know what that is for the US yet. We may actually see it happen on, on live on on screen. We've got Trump's break speaking, uh, speaking. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's 4 p.m. this afternoon here. Uh, speech to announce uh, comes as a surprise from Source. Uh, okay. There you go, it's been added, so whatever he's going to be speaking at uh, at 4 p.m. So that uh, could create the markets roll, rocking and rolling at 4 p.m., which uh, doesn't give you a lot of time to react, but uh, and it could completely negate everything I've said in the, in the upcoming video outlook. <laughs> right. Um, he's going to resign. He or I? Oh, no, I didn't say right. Right, seriously. Um, so we're looking at forward during the week, Monday. So Tuesday, we've got. Um, uh, Reserve Bank of Australia uh, rate statement, no expectation of any changes there. They've already been saying in the past that the next uh, change would most likely be to the upside. It's expected that would be contained within this statement as well. If it doesn't, that could give a uh, negative uh, price action there for the Aussie dollar, but um, it still remains relatively bullish from last comments. Moving into the uh, UK then, next later in the morning, construction PMI, um, always it's a lesser data, but it, it does still create some volatility and it will do in the current state with the pound as it stands. Uh, we've got Fed speaker speaking at 5.45, uh, Fed member speaking even, just to speak about the outlook for employment and inflation in the National Association of Business Economics. And that could be quite key, sitting at 5.45 as tomorrow afternoon, so be wary. Uh, more important than most important of the service of all the PMI numbers is the services PMI number coming out 9.30 on Wednesday morning. Of course, then as we go through the morning, well, we've got the FOMC speaker look. Um, due to a, a, a speech titled The Outlook for Tomorrow. That's interesting. I've seen a few of those recently. Um, okay, well, um, there we go. Um, We've got, we've, got, we've got someone looking at his crystal ball in uh, at some point Wednesday morning-ish uh, before the ADP non-farms come out, which will not normally cause a bit of a stir, but not anything massively significant. And the services data, uh, non-manufacturing data out at 3 p.m. there, crude oil inventory, so quite a bit there. And then we've got a load of FMC speakers. Now we had the, um, obviously the rate uh, increase last, um, last week. Now I'm just looking at some dot analysis which I can't show you on this computer, it's on my other computer uh, for, which was released from the Fed. Now the dot analysis I can show you during a week at other points, uh, nearer the time maybe, is where the different participants uh, expect interest rates to be when it comes to the end of the year. And the, the 2018 the end of the year is expected to come in at between 225 and 2.5 and everything I've seen so far looks looks like it's pointing to another quarter percent interest rate increase in December. But we will have all these speakers before then. These will cr uh, create volatility large, uh, largely out of out of time of uh, when we're trading, thank thankfully. Okay, moving through um, the week and, well, not a lot on Thursday, but on Friday, of course, non-farm payrolls. And that will be the main number coming through there. The uh, retail sales in Australia will be out well before we get up. Uh, so there we go. Uh, quite a bit out this week, but... Um, the non-farm uh, payrolls being the biggest and most important number of all there now. So, and of course the Fed speakers, I wouldn't ignore them. Um, they're allowed to speak now. So looking at Euro dollars, I'm looking at a weekly chart here. It's put a bearish engulfing. It's found support though into its weekly eight. So it could be more bearish. I'm as much as I'm bearish because of technically it's gone bearish here. Uh, we've got the potential for a bit more movement to the upside. We've got a monthly and a weekly pivot, uh, both sitting above price at the moment. It may have bottomed out here. I'd like to think it's bottomed out here in a sense because I've got this sort of bullet overall bullish <laughs> program in my brain in a sense. 
Uh, as I say, technically it's wrong, uh, it's, it's bearish at the moment, but uh, I, I still think we may be uh, seeing a change at some point. But we've got to trade what, what's there at the moment as opposed to what I think may become. Uh, there, there are fundamentals that may change this. The, the main weakness here is, is through the Italian uh, inf uh, debt uh, figures. Uh, expected to be higher than was originally forecast etc now that debt I think it's it's relatively a, a drop in the ocean overall to the European situation but there we are we'll see um, it, it may well bounce back at some point but for now as I say it's bearish signal how do the, uh, the how, where's the big money uh, how are they looking at it well let's have a look um, let's have a look at the commitment to traders report here and the sentiment really um, is, is becoming more bullish uh, if anything by the big asset management managers pension funds become they, they've, they've edged even more bullish here uh, their ratio really going towards the 69% well, bullish now of course I do get a bit wary when they get overly bullish because there's no one left to sell <laughs> But, uh, or buy, um, should I say? Plenty of plenty of sellers, not enough buyers. Um, of course, but talking of sellers, it's completely the opposite way. Uh, sitting here, the short term, and it may be the short term approach at the moment, is looking at the euro perhaps dipping down further uh, with the hedge funds, etc. They've dropped, they've become a bit more negative, um, which shows on the chart below here. In where well, you can just about see it in the green line here. The, chipped a bit more negative since last week but uh, there we go um, that's pretty much it for the euro let's have a look at the other markets here and we shall have a look at the pound next so the pound funny old one here we just had a blip on the markets this afternoon it for all intents and, pan, yeah, intents and purposes even um, it looks bearish to me on this weekly picture we've got a, a bearish pivot swing kicking in there to shooting stars or doji in a graveyard doji and a shooting star looking bearish however I've uh, just seen a blip um, as a, it's a suggestion as a plan to do uh, accept something else with the Northern Ireland borders uh, we'll see but that's always the risk in this market you start getting bearish because that's what it's telling you and suddenly um, something said and uh, it, all of a sudden it's going bullish again now Unlike the euro, uh, we did see uh, um, uh, with the euro we've seen a break of the trend line because the this uh, dip down here, the sort of arguable bearish trend line, is probably a, a little bit lower and it's not been broken now. Of course, and quite rightly so, uh, may, uh, quite a few traders will be looking at it from this perspective and say, "Well, actually, it has uh, broken lower." And yes, it has. It's uh, it was well, certainly put a lower high in, so there's bearish sort of signatures, undertones to this market at the moment. But in the big picture, well, high lows <laughs> still got high highs, so and there's an argument. And each way bet may be or not to bet at all. It is it is forever a risky ish market to be trading um, unless uh, it's just suddenly there's nothing being said. If there's no speaker speaking, it's a bit safer. So there's the pound. What's the sentiment on the pound? Well, let's have a look at the cotton analysis here and the sentiment really, we was short positions being unwound here still uh, from the asset managers, uh, institutional money, it's uh, being unwound and maybe uh, much more bullish, I say much more bu bullish, but it's, it's only 65% shorts now uh, ratio um, there and the uh, uh, leverage funds, the hedge funds sitting there, well, 57% uh, short, yep, 57% short. They're reducing their short positions slightly and uh, increasing the long position. So there's there's a there's a hint of bullishness there uh, for the pound. Right, that's the pound. Let's have a look at dolly yen. And well, I've been, uh, last week I was over some weeks I've been talking about this uh, weekly 200 I think it's still got potentially further upside we're getting back towards this uh, resistance zone that we've seen before that sits on the weekly around there 11435 ish uh, that may be may provide some resistance at this point um, it from a weekly point of view high lows high highs just continue pushing through from a daily perspective well it's just going up and up and it's a bit of a wall of worry almost and you, with the uh, weekly and monthly pivots below well there may be some targets to uh, uh, pull back towards 
And talking of worry, if we do see some worry and money running to back towards safety, well, in the past past few months or a year or so, we've seen the yen as a safety a safe haven as it's been seen. Be interesting to see if the money runs back towards it. But for now, it's well looking firmly firmly bullish. <laughs> Okay, but with risk, of course, uh, as it as it sort of gets steeper and steeper on this run here. Now, um, looking at the cot analysis, and well, the money um, still is, is perhaps getting a little bit more short. Certainly, getting a little bit more short, and that's really following the technicals that we're seeing there. I'm um, just looking at the. In fact, we've got people agreeing here uh, for the asset managers leverage money the hedge funds they 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 were both looking net short positions overall so it's a, a, an expectation that that's going to continue pitching up one thing i do start watching it whenever it starts getting short um, is is w looking for these uh, sort of high levels and I've, I looked at this at yen uh, yeah New Zealand dollar and it's continued just uh, pitching against us but what generally when we see these high levels pitched in here we do do see a bit of a reversal maybe so it will be uh, I'll be watching uh, carefully uh, if, if we see this going up over the next few weeks but for now it does actually it doesn't look particularly toppy at all so there we are that's where we are with the yen. Lurking then, finally, not finally, Aussie dollar. It's nearly there. And the weekly Aussie dollar. The weekly Aussie dollar, well, it's it's still in a solid downward trend. It's uh, pitched in back into its uh, uh, weekly uh, bands uh, that uh, Charlie uses last week. And uh, it's uh, pretty much moved back from them again this week. And it's just reacting to those uh, those levels. Coming down to the daily and it's sort of effectively pitched just through that trend line never managed to uh, close above it there's 200 uh, 200 the uh, daily 50 sitting around there as well it is weak i mean it put a pivot swing uh, in there a bearish pivot swing on on thursday friday it just pitched below it triggering it a little bit not really seeing much reaction to it yet the monthly pivot was below us it's been ticked off the weekly pivots just above us so maybe we'll see how these markets run but if we see selling off well this well could uh, continue to to the to the downside as i said it's still putting effectively on this big picture here lower highs lower lows so um it did a little what a little positive move last month but uh, as we're moving into this month it's starting off weak and the sentiment is it goes let's, let's have a look at what the sentiment is like sitting there on the australian dollar it's, the numbers are low, but it's still short, um, marginally less short from the asset managers there. Uh, the hedge funds, they're reducing their long positions <laughs> so, uh, and short positions, but it's, it's, it's still a bit more of a swing towards the short side of things. And you see the short, most traders here are sitting there net, net uh, short. Um, again, I really need to look at this, see if we're getting it towards extremes here with the... Uh, Nope, there's, 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 it's getting in that range of uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll see it get a little bit too extreme and the, all the money sort of becomes on the short side and suddenly there's a dash to buy. But at the moment, um, still looks uh, like it could continue south. Bigger picture. Aussie dollar, that is. Finally, the Canadian dollar in terms of currencies. Now, um, we've seen a bit of some good news through the weekend there with uh, the new... Uh, Northern American Treaty, which or it's been renamed now, the um, Canadian and uh, Mexican Treaty. Um, anyway, North American Treaty has been re-signed, uh, re reviewed, and re-agreed, and uh, that that was bullish for the Canadian dollar here on the weekly point of view. There was a bit of stress around it, but it has been doing pretty well regardless over the last week or so. In the last week, we saw it pitch up high and sell off for most of the rest of the week. Then. Oh, say most of the rest of the week. It's towards the end of the week, actually. Beg your pardon. It uh, it sold off, um, but uh, it, at the moment it's put lower highs, lower lows in. Okay, this was a bit of a a mess here, uh, at the beginning of last month, but at the moment we do have this gap here. And, well, I know we've got an Austra a gap in the uh, euro that's not been filled for about a year or so, but uh, these gaps do tend to uh, get filled at some point with the monthly, weekly pivots above. There is a possibility. Um, it's just down into its uh, monthly S1 at the moment. It'd be interesting to see how that 
goes but uh, it's erring at the moment on the bullish side talking earlier on the bullish, bullish side let's see what the uh, sentiment is from the bigger traders there and it's still two to one although the the one is reduced <laughs> uh, um, actually yep it was more than two to one at one stage but the shorts have reduced quite significantly last Tuesday uh, perhaps someone got a hint there uh, deal might be in the, in the offing anyway uh, certainly the short sides reduced there on the um, uh, the asset management uh, institutional money uh, hedge funds well they're getting a bit hitched uh, but they looks like the hedge both sides long side short side here at the moment it's uh, but they're still sitting there at least two to one on the sh on the shorter side as well sorry yeah on the short side there they're sitting as opposed to the asset managers are two to one ish or a little bit less than that on the long side so conflict here um, between the two the slower money maybe maybe but be right anyway um, that's pretty much that now finally I'll have a look at the S&P's just keep uh, Derek happy so I don't know why I left this little triangle on there but uh, it's been there all that time and it's it's well and truly chopping up and the weeklies last week it was a bit of a, a flat old week we started the week well this week by looks of things pitching up and head, again heading up so each of these little dips still not seeing any significant retracement yet um, so you just have to remain bullish on it there's not a lot else you can do he says um, of course we can look at what the sentiment uh, from the uh, the larger traders is sitting like and well that's uh, well dropping the shorts is dropping off again there a bit, uh, significant increase there uh, on the long side and looking at leverage funds there or the hedge funds what they're doing well they dropped off both sides short and the long side um, but uh, more of the long side than the short side so maybe taking profit taking uh, we'll see maybe in just end, end of quarter but um, it's yeah it's uh, yeah big big money still bullish forever bullish um, <laughs> hedge funds bearish forever bearish it seems there we go. That's it for me for the week. Um, hope you have a great week and I'll speak to you um, during, every morning, of course, and uh, of course, next Monday. Take care. Bye for now.